All right, so this is the second half of the periodic table lecture. Last time we talked about the guy that uh, discovered it, put it all together. His name was Dmitry Mendeleev, Russian guy, super nice. Just kidding, I don't know him. Um, and we talked about the two directions in which the periodic table is organized, right? In periods and in columns, in groups. We talked a little bit about periods, right? These are the horizontal rows on the periodic table. There's seven of them. Within a period, there's the same maximum amount of energy levels. And there's seven of them <clears throat> uh, starting at the top and going to the bottom of the periodic table. As you do, the periods closer to the bottom have atoms that are larger due to the increased number of electrons. Now we're going to talk about groups. So groups are the vertical columns in the periodic table. They organize elements with similar characteristics. There's 18 of them starting at the left and going to the right. Some groups have special names and they're used to refer to them instead of their number. So as I said before, you start from the left, go to the right, there's 18 groups. Here are all the sections of the periodic table. They're separated into three broad types. The metals make up the most of, or the, the biggest quantity of elements within the periodic table, and they're shaded in blue. The metalloids <clears throat> have both metal and non-metal characteristics, and you can see them in the descending staircase shaded in green. And finally, the non-metals are shaded in yellow, and these have specific characteristics as well. So we'll look at the metals first. They're very shiny. They're good electricity conductors. They're good conductors of heat. They're malleable, meaning that you can fold them and you can manipulate them. You can also hammer them into a thin sheet. And they're ductile. They can be pulled into a thin wire. Non-metals, again shaded in yellow, are dull. So everything that metals are not. They're dull, they do not conduct heat or electricity, and they're brittle. Metalloids, again these are the ones in the descending staircase shaded in green, are the least common, and they have some pro properties of metals and some properties of non-metals. For example, metalloids can be able to conduct electricity, but they may also be brittle. So starting with group number one, this is the column to the far left. These are called alkali metals, and these include all of the elements in that column except for the first one, hydrogen. These are soft, highly reactive metals. Group number two, just to the right of that first column, are called alkaline earth metals. These metals are a little bit less reactive than alkali metals. Group number 16, to the other end of the periodic table, but not including the very last column, are called chalcogens. These elements are not metals, but they are reactive. Groups 3 to 12 are transition metals. These metals are varied in their reactivity and their danger. Some are everyday items like iron or silver, but some are very deadly to people like cadmium. Group 17, just to the right of the chalcogens, are called the halogens. These elements are very, very reactive, and they may be dangerous to people. Group number 18, these are the most boring elements. The noble gases lie to the far right in the periodic table and make up that last column. Noble gases do not react with others. They're happy. Lanthanides are the top row at the very bottom of the periodic table that is not attached to the other tiles. 
and actinides are the bottom row. These two rows lie at the very bottom of the periodic table. They're cut out just because we don't want the table to be very wide, and they belong to periods 6 and 7. To locate elements on the periodic table, you simply have to look for the period and their group. So it's just like finding positions on a map or a coordinate plane. So you would go to the period and go across to the proper group. Let's try it. Period 4, group 15. Period 3, group 18. Period 6, group 4. So the first one, period 4, group 15, is arsenic, A-S. The second one, period 3, group 18, is argon, or AR. And the last example, period 6, group 4, is hafnium, or HF.